What can we learn from Mars that could be useful for all people living on Earth, even for those not planning to travel to space? The planet Mars is a hostile place for humans, but it has some similarities to Earth. For example, the length of the day is quite similar. But a year on Mars is twice as long as on Earth, so you can divide your age by two. On Mars, there is gravity, although only a third, so you can divide your weight by three. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? But the temperature on Mars can drop to minus 140 degrees Celsius, and sandstorms can last up to a month. And its light atmosphere is composed mainly of carbon dioxide, which makes it unbreathable for us. So with this paradisiacal panorama, will we ever live on Mars? Well, so far humanity has achieved exceptional things. The Egyptians built the pyramids 4,500 years ago. The first non-stop transatlantic flight took place 93 years ago. And the International Space Station has been the home in space to hundreds of astronauts for over 20 years. So the question might not be whether we will ever live on Mars or not, but rather when and how. And there is still a lot of research to be done until we can take the first step on the red planet, but we are already working on it. With the constant human presence in space, with thousands of experiments on the ISS, and with rovers like Curiosity, currently investigating in the surface of Mars. The first inhabitants of Mars will most likely be a small group of explorers, but after a while, we could build the first Martian society. These last months, I've been working with an international and interdisciplinary team with aerospace engineers like me, but also with architects, biologists, psychologists. All these disciplines and many more will be necessary if we want to settle on Mars. The result of our work is the project NUBA, a sustainable city on Mars for one million inhabitants. But how do you design a city on Mars? The distance between the Earth and Mars is huge. With today's technology, the trip requires about seven months. So sending anything to Mars takes time and is quite expensive. But when you go on vacation, you only take a few things with you, right? The water, the food, the mattress, the sheets, and many other things are actually waiting for you at your destination. It wouldn't make a lot of sense then to build a city on Mars taking all the necessary resources from the Earth. Our city on Mars, Nuba, name of a goddess in the Chinese mythology, is part of a network of five cities on Mars, providing the future inhabitants access to the resources that the planet offers. The city is built on the cliffs of Mars. The construction inside the rock provides structural integrity, thermal stability, and protection against the cosmic radiation of space. But overcoming technical and architectural challenges is not enough. A permanent city on Mars has to be a pleasant place to live. Since the Martian atmosphere is unbreathable, we will always have to be inside. Still, we have to be able to create the feeling of being outside with large parks and green areas. But let's take a step back and look at the Earth. What do we humans need here? Well, to survive, we need oxygen, water and food. But to live, we need our home, the streets, the schools, the hospitals, the clothes we're wearing, our phone, the computer, the internet connection. We take everything for granted here, don't we? Well, you will not find any of those things on Mars currently. So we have to figure out how to create everything with the resources that Mars offers us. First of all, we have to think about everything that we will need and get the materials, the machines and the energy to build it. But wait, that's not so easy. The machines to extract the materials and process them, they have to be built first. In addition to that, there could be materials widely present on Earth that are rather scarce on Mars. For all these reasons, a sensible use of resources and absolute recycling become a necessity. As an example, we can look at the life support system. On Mars, we will need plants that produce oxygen from the carbon dioxide that we humans produce that contributes to the water recycling and that served as our food source. And we will need a system to cultivate these plants as efficiently as possible. In Nuba, 
plants are grown in the agricultural modules in a carbon dioxide rich atmosphere with artificial lighting and growing directly in water and nutrients without a substrate as it is already done in some greenhouses here on earth. With these systems, we're able to reduce substantially the space required for cultivation. Besides the plants, the system will also include microalgae, insects, cellular meat production, some animals and bacteria. All these elements ensure that we can close all the cycles of the life support system. This means that with all the resources that we have in the system, we're able to continuously produce the food, the oxygen and the water required for human survival, recycling absolutely everything. As you can see, it is very important to have a sustainable system on Mars. So once we are there, we do not depend on Earth resources. But this is not enough if you want to create a society of 1 million people on Mars. Population growth has to be sustainable. The city needs to be able to grow with the resources that we have in situ. We could say that we're taking the concept of sustainability to the limit. But all this is far away from where you and I live and probably in a very distant future. So let's see where we are now here on Earth. 1.3 billion tons of food are lost or wasted every year. That could feed hundreds of millions of people, more than 25% of the current population. In Nuba, nothing is wasted. On Earth, we use 51 million square kilometers of agricultural surface. That is per person about 7,000 square meters, the equivalent of a soccer field. In Nuba, we plan to use only 100, the equivalent of just an apartment. In Spain, we consume on average 130 liters of tap water per person per day, while in Nuba, we plan to use only 10 which represents a reduction of 92%. And this is why we have a lot to learn from Mars. Here on Earth, we tend to mistakenly think that our resources are unlimited. Well, Mars takes us to the limit of what is possible because we have to deal with extreme environmental conditions and highly limited resources. Space exploration teaches us to be more efficient with our resources, to not misuse them to value everything we have around us. And that's why investing in space research, it's not just about sending things to another planet. It also helps us understand and address how we live in our own planet to prevent us from needing a planet B where we can survive. Let's make sure that when one day we go to Mars and beyond, it is not because we've wrecked our own planet, but for our eagerness to explore and discover new worlds. Let's all be, today, here on Earth, a little bit more Martian.